I'm about to start my first print. Now one thing I've noticed with this print head is you have to make sure before you print that all three colors are feeding. If you have a jam, you cannot pull the jam back out. That's absolutely the wrong thing to do. But now in the mixing nozzle, all three colors are feeding through. So I'm ready for a print. You can see a blob of mixed colors there. I got Repetier Hosts running with the Cura engine. And I'm going to press print here. I think this will be my very first successful three color print. So there we are. We are at temperature. 200 out of 200, 60 out of 60. So we should just take a second. It says it's bed heating, but basically it's just sort of waiting to get the all go ahead. What I'm gonna do here is sheet and feed a little, little yellow. Got the yellow pretty ready to go there. Yeah, I'm too, it is printing. It is printing. It sure didn't spit out any blue. So it's having problems. I don't know what it's having the problems with there. So that almost worked. Um, it got the first layer in yellow PLA down on the bed with good bed adhesion. It skipped the blue uh, filament and then it printed the uh, natural clear uh, colored filament and again, good bed adhesion. But I let the machine cool down and I pulled the blue filament out and this is what I found. So this uh, you can see is this like corkscrew looking bit of filament and it's a clear indicator that the filament is getting to be a much too high of temperature in the heat sink itself. So instead of pushing, rigidly pushing itself out through the nozzle tip, it's sort of turning all molten and twisting up inside of the uh, heat sink. So this means that the heat sink isn't getting cool enough. Or alternately, you could say too much heat is getting into the heat sink. So I need to both reduce the amount of heat transfer from the uh, the heating block, which is also the nozzle in the diamond hot ends. So I need to reduce the amount of heat getting to the, the, the heat sink, but I also need to increase the cooling on the heat sink. So the fan, uh, this 50 millimeter fan, is currently right up against the, uh, the, the, the shroud, the cowling that covers the three heat sinks. And because of that, the 50 millimeter fan is like this big around and the heat shrink, or the, the, the hole is like this. So at the top and the bottom, there's this gap uh, where the fan is basically blowing on a wall. Now I got about a 30 degree angle there where the wind is trying to change directions, but uh, it doesn't do that good of a job. So I need to back that fan off so that there's less sort of, of, an, of a steep angle of entry for that, for that air. And hopefully I will get better airflow across all three heat sinks with that. The other thing I'm gonna do is print off the mold for making a silicone, high temperature silicone boot for the heater block. And hopefully that boot will keep the heat contained more efficiently within the nozzle itself. So the nozzle, not only is too much heat getting from the nozzle heater block uh, into the heat sinks, but it's also just radiating out into the air and it takes forever to heat that nozzle up to temperature. Um, it's just such a big block of brass, um, but it cools down lickety split. 10 seconds after uh, turning off, it's 190 instead of 200 degrees, whereas it probably takes a minute and a half to get from 190 up to that 200 degree mark. So um, definitely need uh, the, the silicone boot. Hopefully those two solutions will do the job. If not, then I'm gonna have to put an individual 30 millimeter fan blowing across all three heat sinks individually. Eh, don't wanna do that. It's gonna cause a lot of problems with the design. It won't be nearly as compact. This part right here is supposed to be made out of solid brass. So this looks like brass, but it's actually brass plated stainless steel. So that's really bad because stainless steel has terrible thermal conductivity. And you want your heating block and your nozzle, which this actually, this part does both, the heating block and the nozzle functions. 
And you want both those parts to be made out of real brass because of that thermal conductivity. So it would be better if this was made out of aluminum. But the entire reason that they're making it out of stainless steel is because it's got that weight to it. So it feels like brass in your hand, but it's actually brass plated stainless steel. Just terrible. Yeah, if I can find a legitimate brass version, I think that my problems will be uh, greatly alleviated. So this is the extended fan shroud that I've made tonight. Now there were errors in my print, so I put some tape on it to patch those holes. Um, you can see the original shroud there and with this shroud I added about two centimeters in length. And you can see what the airflow used to be just blowing into this sort of wall. So there's a much lower angle of incidence now and you get good airflow. Um, to prove that, let me put this piece of paper back behind here and dangle this thread in front. You can see all that movement of the thread. And basically that means that there's good airflow. Now is it working? Well, if I touch this, it's about 50 degrees, so it's nice and warm. If I touch the actual heat sink back in here, it's uncomfortable to touch. Like, yeah. So I'm gonna say it's a good, ooh, yeah, see that's, that's gonna burn you if you keep your hand on it. So that means that, that's I'm touching the tips of the fins, that means that down in there it's definitely melting PLA temperatures. And that's just with the nozzle at 205 degrees. So I have this, um, heat blanket here which is aluminum foil encasing fiberglass so maybe I can come up with a better blanket and also I need to try that silicone covering today is tomorrow that's why I'm wearing a different shirt okay so quick rundown on what I learned on the internet these are the numbers you can pause that if you really want to see them but basically copper 386 brass 160 aluminum 204 stainless steel 12 12. <laughs> what do those numbers mean? They're, uh, no, they're measures of the thermal conductivity, the ability of the metal to transmit heat from one point to another. So your heating element is some distance from your uh, filament and you need to transmit the heat from the element into the filament. And if you've got a loot or if you've got stainless steel in between there, that heat is really inefficiently getting transmitted, which means you have to pump a whole lot more heat into the stainless steel to get that filament up to temperature. But, that heat goes somewhere. It's a closed system. So even though you're pumping it in, tons of heat just to get that, that heating element up to, up to snuff, uh, it goes somewhere. So it bleeds off. And that's why I've got so much heat down at my tip bleeding off into my radiators and causing all those problems. Um, there's another measure of thermal properties of metals and that is specific heat. And this is a measure of the amount of heat required to change temperatures for an equivalent mass. That's the key. Now the numbers here are 0 0.376, 0 0.401, 0 0.921, and 0 0.502. Copper, brass, aluminum, stainless. So aluminum has the 0.921, highest value. By the way, here, low values are good. Uh, the highest value for aluminum, but that's per equivalent mass. So if you look at your heater block, it's gonna have a certain dimension. And aluminum is a very non-dense metal, so it's gonna be much less mass. So the number for aluminum is gonna drop way down there for the equivalent uh, volume. Whereas stainless steel has an equivalent mass to brass. That's why they used it in this design, because the consumer is gonna hold that in their hand and say, oh, hey, that seems like about the weight of brass, must be brass, but it's not, it's fake, it's a fake out. Um, so yeah, brass, uh, also pretty low. Copper, that's the lowest. So for both those uh, measures, copper is actually the better, the best material to use, but it's a very soft metal, and I'm sure there's other properties that make it sort of undesirable. Um, aluminum, pretty good material. They should have made this, if they wanted to make a low cost version of this from China, they should have made it with aluminum and just told us that it was made out of aluminum. not lie to us, and aluminum would actually be, I would buy the aluminum one over the brass because I'm concerned about weight. I don't want all this weight on my head. I've had to upgrade the stepper motors on the printer because this thing weighs too much for the original steppers to lift it. So aluminum would have been a great material, but instead they decided to lie to us by brass plating stainless steel. So China strikes again. It'll get you every time. Okay, what's coming? This is an E3D V6 
hot end inside of some 3D printed parts. Now, the 3D printed design here is a modification of the Joseph Prusa i3, or, uh, i3 Mark II. Now, he released those files, and I've modified them so that you can see here there's three channels uh, coming into one for the, uh, for the three into one uh, hot end. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to work on this one while I'm waiting for my actual genuine brass diamond end to come in the mail. And I think that in combination with this silicone boot, focus, and the, uh, the actual brass material, and the better airflow that I'm now getting through my cowling, I think that I won't have a problem with heat anymore and I should be able to successfully print with the diamond end. So it would be nice to have a cheaper version, that being this, uh, because you can get these for like five bucks, these hot ends. Uh, these whole radiator things and uh, yeah, so it should be like a much cheaper upgrade whereas the genuine brass First of all, you're probably gonna buy a counterfeit one accidentally first and then when you can find a genuine brass one They're usually 40 to 60 dollars. So that's that's not nearly as inexpensive um, So yeah, that's what's coming make sure you Subscribe and also click the little notification icon down there so that you get the notifications when I release the videos of me printing and thanks for doing that. It helps out a lot. As you can see, this is a brand new channel and I'm trying to launch here. So tune in and good stuff is coming. Thanks for watching.